Good evening, or uh, welcome to the stream. Um, good evening to Shadow Girl, Addison, Jadomo, uh, Macho, Monster AB, Vigil, Citizen Ninja, Feathers, Robert Voss, and uh, Burger Pops. Good evening. Good to see you all uh, uh, in the in the chats. Um, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. So I had some spicy tea before the stream, and yeah, it's it's repeating on me. So it's it's not good. We'll get there in the end. Good evening to Wolf of Odin, uh, to Socially Confused, and to Dark and Good to see you, buddy. Glad you could join us. So, yeah. Um, yeah, thank you very much. I've had um, a bit of a... I've had my ears lowered, or head sharpened, depending on how you look at it. Um, yeah, so that's all good. Commentator, good evening. Good to see you, bud. Um, and tidied the, the, the chin squeak up a little, so that's kind of cool. And then blew a load of money on Warhammer this weekend, so that was good. Um, but yeah, spicy takes today after a spicy dinner says can. Yeah, I, do you know what? Um, I think it's about time. We've had 12 years, 9 years of people bitching about no progress. So yeah, it's time to start slapping back about progress. And if they can take a couple of weeks of being slapped back about now there is progress. Um, they need to, you know, go find another hobby, maybe. But yeah. That's it. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. New character creator, absolutely macho. Yeah, unfortunately, um, the body type, I just, I couldn't figure out the controls. So ended up with the same body type, but yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, good to see you all. Um, yeah, good evening, Shinobi Trip. Good to see you, buddy. Um, and uh, welcome. Where Endeavor, question mark. See, this is, I knew I shouldn't have started this. This was a bad call. We're just going to have... But where's this thing? It's like, ugh. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, I'm going to stream for as long as I can. Uh, basically, just before we get into the meat of stuff, um, next weekend, I, I won't be here. I'm spending Easter weekend down in the West Country in the UK with my parents. So I will not be around. First stream back will be the 7th, which will be Sunday. I'll try and get a video done, but um, there's a lot of stuff going on at work at the minute. I've got a lot of extra work to do after my training delivery so I can't make any promises unfortunately but I will do my level best to get something to you even if it's just talking about uh, the announcement that we've had this week with persistent pains but I'm sure we'll get to talk a little bit about that in the stream as well yeah so it's gonna be a bit of a rough one um, it's been about six and a half seven weeks of constant delivery for me. We are down to three people in the department that should have been eight people, uh, so I am pretty tired round about now. I've not been online as much as I want to be or um, any of that stuff. Thank you for the heads up. Um, you know, so yeah, we'll um, we'll see how we go, and and I will endeavour to be on, but I will do at least an hour with you guys, and then if it gets too much, I'll need to get my head down in. But uh, yeah, um, hey Richard, good to see you buddy. Um, hopefully that's fixed it. But yeah, so has that fixed it? Has it fixed it? Let's find out. Um, certainly seems that way. But yeah, very cool. Um, Richard, wh where is it for you buddy to be mourning? Um, that's kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, uh, hope, you're, hope you're somewhere that's warmer than the UK at the minute. It was very chilly when I went out and got some tea, so... Yeah. Um, first things first, we had a really, really good event on Friday night. Uh, through the Discord channel, we did some of the Overdrive um, initiative missions. They had literally just released the second phase, where you fly around, you engage a couple of targets in the air, you soft F them, and then you steal their stuff. Um, there's a key that you then need to go and hand in. And you do three of those, and that's stage two of the Overdrive mission. And this is the chain of missions that are going to take you up to being able to get the Mark II F7A, which is the military version. Um, so, yeah, exciting. And, and hopefully, you know, uh, we can get as many people as we can from the community those things. Um, and, and we'll keep doing that. Again, unfortunately... That's not going to be possible this weekend, but we will have another stab at it. If it's all rolling around, I think they said there was five, although I've seen now written that someone said there's only three of them now. Um, but if it is still going when I get back, we'll put up another Friday Night Ops. Det details will all be in the Discord. 
and link will be to that is in the description down below. So by all means. Um, yeah, uh, couldn't find first key. Having to start over. This is feathers. Oh no, that's awful. Well, we got we had about thirteen of us, and and it turned out that we kind of split into groups and went off and did stuff. So we rolled through it really quickly. And um, we had a bunch of people from the chat in there. Edison was there, Nidoma was there, Shadow Girl was there, uh, Avi was there. So we've had a really, really good um, blast at it. Um, Sydney, going to be 30 degrees today. Holy cow, Richard. That's I mean, that's lovely weather. But uh, not exactly gaming weather. That's kind of like when the, you need to break the AC out and stuff, right? Um, now that we have the Mark II Hornet, I need a new hype campaign to jump on. Medical therapy and question marks, so as you know me. Um... I mean, sure, yeah. Um, but yes, um, yeah, lots of people saying the second event was too easy. I understand that the combat, the ships weren't particularly tough. Um, I mean, I guess... So, two parts to this. Firstly, I don't agree that everyone should be able to get everything. I think some things should be challenging and tough to get to. Um, but also, there's the flip side of that argument, which is... Um, it would be really interesting make things really hard for group, you know, and only people in groups can do it if what the reward is is a single seat fighter reward. It seems more sensible to reward the gameplay. So, sure, they could have made it more challenging, but, you know, there's a there's a, a level to be had there. Um, Hammerhead was very busy flying around instead of shooting things, um, said AB. Yeah, you, you spent about, I think, 0.5% of the time shooting stuff. And then 99% of the time getting to stuff. Um, wasted m torps on the Mantis. Uh, yeah, I feel like it's a waste at the best of time, right? Um, but yeah, absolutely. So yeah, um, we've done the first two parts of that. That was really good. And thank you to everyone that came along. That was really good fun. Um, we tend to do these things on a Friday at 9pm UK time. So we'll have another stab at that. Obviously after this coming weekend, so in a week's time... The clocks will have gone forward to UK Daylight Saving Time, so just Google it if you need to and figure out what time we're on and stuff. But yeah, um, NPC in general when flying are not challenging, says um, Edison. You're not wrong. Um, oh, Stunner, are, are you on? Are you? Are we on the same time? Or are you? Are you watching this a little bit behind? I'm not. I'm not sure where you are, buddy. Um, but yes, hey Ape, uh, good to see you, my friend. Um, but yeah, so yes, um, good fun with the missions, but yeah, if you're not sure quite what's going on, and I, I'm sure you are, but um, yeah, basically what we're talking about is this, um, which is just the, uh, the overdrive initiative, this is the page, um, and the second stage of the mission is now out, which is this part. Um, the keys, basically, the storyline goes that we've gone onto the servers, we've done all the hacks, um, but they're now talking to each other um, in some sort of encryption code that they can't kind of break. So we now have to ha um, hunt down, quote-unquote, high-ranking Xenothreat members and recovering their digital keys so we can uncover more about their plans. Um, and it comes up as a priority targets um, overdrive initiative mission. Um, and we've also done the Intel raid, which is the go and break into a bunker, hack the um, servers, get stuff uploaded, because the, the bunkers are owned by Xenothreat. We had a really interesting um, case where Edison got a crime stat for loitering in Ninetales space. So the UEE took the Ninetales side against Edison and gave him a crime stat for loitering in Ninetales space. Maybe just Star Citizen things. Maybe it's just uh, an Edison deserved it. I, I, I'm not sure, but um, yeah. <laughs> uh, good evening, my arch. Good to see you, buddy. Um, NPC just randomly said, "Feathers, did you survive, or are you now? Are you now properly dead? Um, do we need to? You know, yeah. Customer service will be able to help that, mate. Um, talk to customer service. Getting banned completely. Stakara God says, "Just here to find out how long it took Badgers to type that title. Upsettingly." A lot. Um, I don't want to talk about it. But yeah. Um, the key thing, of course, um, that people are talking about now is the whole um, 
the announcement that we've had this week, um, and I was in the middle of finding that live stream and then realised that I completely had not done that, um, but or the ISC from last week, which is the announcement, well, first off, before we go and do that, how many people in chat have not seen last week's Inside Star Citizen, the cargo one? How many people have not yet watched it? Be really interested to know. Everything I'm surprised I'm just going to put that video up. I was kind of hoping that the latency would would make this so I can actually see what's uh, what's going on. But let me say I thought it was awesome. Said Macho, good. I'm glad you saw it, buddy. Um, who else has um, managed to see it? Tumbleweed rolls through, but yeah. So, um, whilst we get a couple more answers as to whether or not people saw the to and fro with cargo video, um, I've seen it, I'm down to see it again. They said, um, really, really interesting announcement. Um, and that's what we're going to have a look at now. Um, just a couple of things I want to react to on here. So let's go and have a look. at the very heart of the non-combat Star Citizen experience. And as it continues to evolve in the upcoming Alpha 323 and beyond, its next major evolution is less about the places you'll go and more about the ones you'll start and come back to. Now, hangars, whether they're persistent, instanced, personal, or staging, make up the next frontier of cargo gameplay. And we went to Chad and his team for an early look at where they're going and how they're progressing. Let's find out more. So yeah, we've had a couple ISCs before to talk about the new cargo and hangars features coming. But now that we're here and about to release things, we want to talk a bit about how that impacts your play experience, even if you don't care at all about cargo. OK, first thing that I want to react to, right? Can you imagine the rage if CIG had said, even if you don't care about combat. If this had been a combat video. Um, and all the PvP fanboys. Re, this is a PvP game. Re, um, so yeah. Like. I get it. In a lot of games. Because of the time. You've got to make the interesting stuff. And focusing on the interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. Combat. But with this. The whole point is. That all of the industrial careers. And cargo. And merchant careers. And all that sort of stuff. They are supposed to be just as interesting and time-consuming as en and engaging as the combat stuff. So they need to stop staying stuff like this so that people understand that whatever you want to do in this game, you can have a go at. That doesn't mean that things aren't going to bleed into each other and, you know, that as a non-combat player, you're going to end up with combat anyway or vice versa. But yeah, it's, it's a bit pants, but here we go. Definite, definite iRobot vibes. So let's start with... Read that title. Persistent hangers. What are they and what does that mean? So a persistent hanger is an instance hanger that is going to be assigned to you whenever you select your home location when logging into the game for the first time for a patch. When that happens, what we do is we determine the largest ship that you have and then entitle to you a persistent hangar that's of the size needed to facilitate that ship. Whenever you go into that hangar into the game, that hangar at your home location is always your hangar and you'll be able to use it like your home. You'll be able to keep things in the hangar. You'll be able to leave things around. You can invite friends in. You can treat it like your own little oasis. We've been talking about this for a while, um, the persistence, and, and this seems to be the first way that they're going to really start stress testing this um, as part of server meshing and everything else and get an idea of what it looks like steady state before they bring server meshing in 
and then compare that with server meshing and, and go. But I'm sure I don't have to say to many people in here, one of the big promises of this game was the persistence that it was going to leave us with. And they've made strides down that road, but it's also not been smooth. So there's been plenty of times people have logged into hangars and or gone to the hangars and there's debris from like the previous fight that's been in there or someone's crashed and there's just crap all over the place right so they're going to need to um, figure that out but now you can leave what you need to in your hangar so you can load it up with stuff you can have whatever goes out this is going to be at your home location whatever you set um, and just paraphrasing what they said whatever the biggest ship is in your fleet they will give you a hangar to fit that so if you've only got fighters they will give you a fighter sized hangar up to the, the size of the biggest one right um it also seems like those hangars are getting larger in and of themselves so hopefully no longer will be the days of things like the spirit and the carrack and other ships that basically scrape through the hangar doors as they land now there should be a lot more space so you can leave this stuff lying around um, and not have it, uh, you know, land on top of the ship or blow the ship up or, you know, whatever else. So, yeah, um, and then it'll stay like that. A um, couple of really interesting things. It raises a question as to, you know, we're about to find out what, you know, kind of... <sighs> what sort of sizes of fleets people have in terms of what the biggest ship is. Because, sure, there's lots of hangars at each of these locations... But when you go, okay, but how many can take a hammerhead or above? And then you go, okay, and now they're talking about 200 players per server, 400 plus charred. We'll talk about that in a second, because that, e that got even bigger over the weekend. Um, some of these locations might have to get bigger. The big question, of course, is once you're in your hangar and the doors are shut, do you stay behind the doors of, those, that, doors of that hangar? Or... Do you, um, you know, do you, are you effectively pulled away and that hangar then clears for someone else to land? That seems to be the most obvious solution to what they've got because they, you know, if you've got 100, 200 players per shard or per server, not a lot of people like going to Warzone because of the time it takes to get out of atmosphere. Art Corp's buggy is all hell right now. Um, you know, Lawville is affecting people's. Frame rates after the big update, <clears throat> excuse me, although that has improved somewhat. So, you know, you've only got a couple of real options there. And if you're trying to spread 200 players amongst two landing zones, that's going to be challenging. So maybe these locations are getting bigger. Maybe we're just getting more hangars in the same location. Um, interesting. But I think there are some changes coming to the location, certainly. But yeah. Um, Jodomo says, think it would be nice to get a decent hangar to land the spirit or, spirit or the Carrack in without clipping the entrance. 100%. As someone who constantly bounces the spirit off the hangar doors. Um, yep, absolutely. Single track. Good evening, buddy. Good to see you. Sorry, I missed you uh, creeping in at the back there. But, um, yep, that's it. Please, dear God, let me set my home location to Grimhex, says Mr. Thor. Uh, interesting. Um... Yeah, I hope you get a home hangar par hangar you have for the ships you've bought. Um, oh, I see what you mean. So all the hangars that you bought with the ships, the ones that used to come out with them, that are a home hangar. I, I don't know. Maybe you'll get to select the skin, but I don't think we're, we're going to get that. The other interesting thing is, what happens if whilst the hangar doors are there, someone else flies in? How does that work? That'll be an interesting one to ask. Is there a javelin-sized hangar? Yeah, no question mark i don't believe there is um but yeah uh confirmed carrot parts cannot ju can just cannot park worth a damn says cam uh i mean cam obviously woke up this morning and chose vi um violence never had an issue with the carrot says the carrot god the sea one's another story yeah it's that tail it's just too big um nope capital class hangar is as large as it goes um yeah so yeah um i anyway, i look at the polaris side opening cargo bay as well yeah, interesting stuff. Um, I wonder something else. If you buy a bigger shipping game with a hangar resize to that ship, that's interesting. What happens to that hangar it, when you change over? I, I guess you just get another hangar 
all your goods are put back in the the freight elevator and that's it. So for those that don't know, and they're going to cover this in a little bit, the freight air elevator does that stuff. But let's continue on with the video um, and I'll respond to chat and the video as we keep going. So let's talk about for these personal hangers, how do you actually get into them? You can make a request via Interesting view of the mobile landing, though. And when we do that, make a request. Oh, go back a bit. So yeah, what's at the bottom? Same things, right? Contracts, comms, health, home, maps, journal, knickknacks, rep, trader. Um, and then landing and vehicles. So landing is obviously the service bit, right? And then vehicles. So the mobile glass options all look the same. Um, but yeah. You so can same process for make landing. a request via ATC for landing. And when we do that, we will check to see if you have any personal hangers entitled to you. You'll be able to enter in using largely the same methodology that you do now, land, and then you can just hang out in there. As far as what can you actually do with your personal hanger, and what kinds of confirmed. things can you decorate with it? What we're going to do is allow you to call anything in your inventory hey, up via that. that freight elevator. You can pick it up off the freight elevator either with your hands or using the tractor beam and just screw it about your location however you pick. This is really cool. They say something a little bit later on, and I just don't want, I want you to kind of pick it up in context, right? They talk about front loading stuff. So being able to make sure that not only are you able to load your ships, but you're also able to load it in a way that when you get to your destination, it's easier to load. So obviously, if you've got three stops, the stop for the stuff that you're going to take off in stop three should be at the back of the hangar as you look at it, or the back of the ship as you look from outside, right? The far side of the hangar, and then, or the far side of the cargo bay, and then stop two should be closer, and stop one should be right at the front. Because that way, when you get to stop one, everything's really easy to offload because it's right there in front of you. And then you clear space for stop two. Maybe you move that forward and then stop three forward. And whatever you're picking up, you put right at the back. But it's, it's you know, I know it sounds pernickety and it sounds like immersion. But actually, for a lot of people who are looking at their money per minute or money per hour in this game, it's going to make a hell of a difference. Um, the speed at which you can load and unload. Um, obviously, those freight elevators also the way that we're going to be able to bring items from our personal inventory up into existence now and, and back down into our um, planetary inventory, if you like. Also in the hangars, you'll notice several new kiosks. We have the freight elevator kiosk, which has a brand new uh, UI and uh, inventory system to deal with... Uh, that's kind of cool as well. Um, maybe that means that um, Ape in Space has just put, my Kraken show's coming with a VFG industrial hangar. Maybe if you've got more industrial hangars, you get larger lists or something to encourage, like, you know, industrial players having industrial spaces to work in, right? That kind of makes sense. Um, how they give that to us, whether that's just something you buy or whether maybe that's something that you rent or you pay, like, a charge per game year or whatever to have that space and then those of it that have it as a an item within their ship hanger already just get it and that's that but that would be quite cool um ship loading and unloading um will make the raft rather advantageous yep three boxes 100 percent, and that is the difference at the moment we only think of ships in terms of their capacity whereas actually the raft makes it incredibly easy to 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 kind of get stuff on and off it's going to change it's going to just add another dimension now it's not just about how quick it is now it's going to be how easy is it to get that stuff on and off how many people do you need thinking of things like the caterpillar if you're loading from the floor uh how are you seeing which part of the cargo board so now with the caterpillar you need to pass it up to someone who's in the hangar to organize it all to make sure it all fits so now you've got two people on constant loading and unloading duty these are the extra bits that are now going to come into force as we move into having physicalized cargo and manual cargo loading. Obviously, you you don't have to. If you're a single player, you can buy cargo with your ship stored, and your ship will load cargo whilst it's stored. And whilst it's loading that cargo, you'll be unable to claim it exactly as if you were reclaiming the ship. So it'll just be like, cargo loading, time left, 18 minutes, 
you can't do anything with it for 18 minutes. But that will be longer than loading it manually, from what they say here, and also it's going to incur a cost, but that's really interesting. Um, it reminds me of that Christmas dinner in a can with each progressive layer. Oh, God. Oh, Shadow Girl, don't remind me. Ugh. <laughs> um, can says, I think Hannah's with ships um, become untenable a long time ago. Um, but I do think having two to three game packs might help you, um, might get you more hangers. Um, but don't buy game packs on a maybe. Yeah, 100%. We're, we're not sure. Kablams, good to see you, bud. Um, welcome in. Thank you very much for joining. A robust, great logistics will increase um, UEC per hour by a lot. Yeah, and all of a sudden, you know, this is really interesting because, Mer you know, it doesn't just become about who's got the fastest ship, who can identify those lucrative routes. Because the routes will always change with Quanta, the routes' prices will fluctuate. It's also now about, you know, you can have the same ship and the same number of players as someone who is used to loading cargo all the time. But just because that crew is going to be practiced in loading cargo, they're going to be able to do things faster than you. So same ship, same components, same upgrades, same um, trading commodities, same routes, the other crew is going to finish faster and therefore be able to do more in the same amount of time, more money, which is which is really interesting, which is what we've been asking for the same for, for the whole time, right, is understanding that we can do things a, a little better if we practice at it. So that's kind of, yeah. Yeah, single track. Quanta has gone pretty quiet lately and, and maybe I'll, I'll touch on that in a, in a future video. That's kind of quite a nice thing to talk about um yeah i hope so the extra game pack should do something not sure on npcs or hangers but that would be nice yeah absolutely um there should be if they've included it as a um as something in a game pack they absolutely should honor that and there should be something that someone who has that has that someone else doesn't even if it's something that the other person can just buy in game you should have that permanently it's yours the uh, end of um, yeah, so many of my ships uh, comes with hangers. Um, if each of those actually becomes personal hangers, I have enough. Um, I don't think they're going to. I think from this, this is going to be a personal hanger. That's why they're talking about it looks at all of your ships and gives you the largest, and then you call ships up and down into it. But we'll see that in a second. I'm kind of getting ahead of ourselves. Um, but yeah, let's have a look. A large volumes of cargo. You're going to have on the left-hand side a section that is showing the contents of the platform itself. And on the right-hand side, similar inventory layout with all your armor and weapons and items. And then you decide. Um, this is this is the bit for me that's a little bit disappointing. Um, is, okay, the layout's a bit balked, fine, whatever. Like, that, that's fine. Um, they could absolutely transition to uh, more image like or less 3d render like and just save a load of bandwidth um, and everything else they could do that because even now loading the inventory as it is um, depending on your connection speed things can take a little bit of time to load as visible in the inventory there still se seems to be things that don't load correctly despite the fact that they very clearly have those graphics so it would be cool to see them to go to something a little bit more basic there are plenty of games that use a picture representation, uh, and I'm thinking specifically Tarkov here, right? Um, but you could use a very realistic picture representation that alters if you add things to it, but it doesn't need to be quite to this level of fidelity. Um, but yeah. And items. And then you decide what you want to spawn in, um, in the freight elevator. Oh, the freight absolutely. elevator then comes up, and then you can start doing like loading and unloading of various cargo into your ship and so on. If you're considerate about how you're loading things and you're trying to optimize your loading times, it'll give you a lot of power as far as, for example, making sure that certain kinds of things are front loaded on the platform to make your multi-crew loading as streamlined as possible. And anything that's in your inventory, you're gonna be able to call up. Some things you might have to put into an inventory container box. We're talking 8, 16, 24, even 32 SU size container boxes that you can put large items in. Now so seeing as we're able to buy these at the moment, it'll be interesting to see 
um, whether or not we have to go and buy those and add these manually, or whether maybe you can just buy them from this interface. So it says you need a couple of boxes to do that. Do you want to buy that? And when you press call, it deducts the credits for you. And you've obviously got an option to say no thanks. And then you, you lose or, you know, whatever, not lose. Whatever you don't want to, you don't have the boxes for doesn't come up and just stays in your planetary inventory. Um, also, um, just as an aside, that's the looting inventory. So when we loot now, you won't have to go into the interaction menu and go into that and wait for it all to load. That's what looting looks like. There's your load out at the bottom. At the top right-hand corner, that's what you're looting. That's so cool and so much quicker. Um, and hopefully it loads a lot quicker as well. Um, I also think some ships will be faster to load um, as others. I mean, compare a Carrick to a Hercules. The Hercules should be faster to load. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the Carrick, you know, needing some form of forklift because there's no ramp to get in versus this. You can literally get those kind of large trolley things and move them up the ramp. Also, how long do we think it's going to be till people start stealing the trolleys out of the... You know, like the old cargo platform things that they walk around pushing? How long before they start nicking those out of the distribution centres and putting them in their own hangars? Because, I mean, it makes sense, right? You get two or three of those, your cargo loading is just going to be... And you're done. It's going to be cr crazy. Um, so yeah, hopefully we get to steal them. Um, logistics will matter how you load stuff. This is awesome, says Macho. Agreed, 100%. Good evening, Scott. Good to see you, buddy. Um, yeah. So my question is, if I park two large ships at two different planets, can I get two separate home hangars? So my understanding is not that, that what they said at the beginning of this is that the, your home hangar is decided when you choose your home location. So regardless of what you do in terms of spawning stuff... Um, or, you know, changing where your respawn location is. It's your home location, full stop, the end. I would imagine the next progression from that is in-game where we start to get things like we can buy our own apartments, we can buy our own living spaces, and then you can start to buy multiple locations around. But, I mean, this is incredible, right? You You can get to the stage where... Maybe potentially, if you look at the size of something like Microtech, you look at the size of something like Lawville, I don't think we're ever going to get to the stage uh, where your hangar is in the same place each time, but I absolutely think you're going to get to the same stage where your hub, or your apartment, or your house, or your whatever it is, penthouse suite, will be in the same place every time, and you'll be able to point to a building and go, that there is my room, that there is my house, and that would be awesome right that's kind of cool um in big cities like that so yeah um that's the hope um also give more reason to use the cuddy side doors 100 percent side doors are cheat codes absolutely yeah all of a sudden all these things are going to become added things to think about with your ships so when people are looking at ships that they don't like them and oh, i don't like the cutty because i don't like this or that or the other now we've got added reasons to look at those ships and go, all right, now that makes that better. Um, all of a sudden, things like the C1 Spirit is going to be a pain in the ass because all those extra doors... Ugh. Yeah, having that door and that... Air, that like the, um, Don't know why it jumped like that. But having that like airlock at the back means that stood at the bottom of the ramp, you can't see as close in so that's going to be a bit of a pain in the ass so i think the c1 spirit as fast as it is and as cool as it is um you know all of a sudden that's gonna be in a drawback to the spirit uh which is interesting right um yeah um players are nicking stuff never says macho i mean i'm gonna give it a go grand threat Gra grand threat oh my god why can't i Nuh. grand theft cargo trolley that's where i was trying to go with that but yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, looking good, right? Um, yeah. Um, okay. Now you can raise that up on the platform, including in collections, transfer that very quickly onto your ship, and then take them to another location. That's exactly what I mean, right? If we go back to the Caterpillar loading, yeah. Is that's, that up on the platform, that's including in collections, transfer that very quickly onto your ship, and then take them to another location. 
So I, I think what we're also going to see here is we're going to start to see the evolution of vehicles that are there designed to help us. Just like we're seeing with the cargo centers, I think they're going to realize very quickly that we're going to start stealing this shit from them. So I would imagine the cargo elevators might get a little bit bigger and there will be a dedicated slot for something like a cargo hauler. Or maybe it's something you pay for as an upgrade or rent out um, or, or that sort of stuff. Um, you know, but in, even in terms of things like cherry prickers, forklifts, something to give a little bit of extra height so loading the caterpillar becomes easier or whatever. I think, you know, we're going to start to see this evolution now of all the extra stuff that we don't get to necessarily buy, but we get to use regardless. And it's not a pain in the ass to get access to these things. Um, so that'll be really cool. In your personal Shady anger, you also have access to several other kiosks, starting with the item bank. Which are another form of kiosk, which you could almost consider like a small freight elevator in a way, in that you can retrieve personal items such as clothing, armor, and weapons. Because the item that's... So this is really cool, because it means if you're getting on someone else's ship, you don't have to go into a hangar and then access a separate system to do it. You can just go... I want my armor, my weapons, my backpack, my ammo, my consumables, my sustenance. Um, I want all that come up in a box, load it in whilst everyone else is getting the ship out. They tell you what hangar you go catch them up, which is a really nice touch, right? Unfortunately, for those that didn't see the roadmap roundup um, last week or this week that we are at the end of, the terminals that are going to allow us to call the subscriber items that we've lost back have been removed from the roadmap they require more work um they said they want to add it back to the roadmap soon which could be quite soon because you know we're only as we're only looking at as far ahead as 323 which is slanted for uh, you know which is slated for next month um so yep yeah, that um but you know it's a bit unfortunate but it was confirmed that these are still in so it doesn't affect these being delivered will be delivered in a tray that's in the same machine so you interact that kind of like you interact with a loot box and you uh, get that out so no other player can actually physically get anything from your local inventory and uh, these item banks can be found not just within the hangars but also the wider location such as your habs and other key areas of a location to retrieve um, your personal items since you can't interact with the with your inventory anymore at any given time it means like we need to have enough item banks around each location so you don't block each other um, from accessing an, an, a terminal, right? It's Anyone that sat and tried to get to the ship rental or the ship purchase kiosks, Lawville is the one I'm thinking of, um, has seen people AFK at those terminals, but are interacting with them. So they just stood there and you can't do anything. You can't get them off, you can't budge them. Uh, you can't run into them and push them around like you can with people stood in an elevator. They're just attached to that terminal and there's nothing you can do about it until they either move or AFK. If they want to troll, they can just sit there and indefinitely block that terminal. So it's really good to see that they're thinking about that. That interface that we're seeing here on the screen right now looks so much better than the other ones they've got. The new Kelto one I hate. The colours give me eye cancer. It's awful. Um, but yeah, let's let's not do that. But um, it's just a quicker way to get a quick gun or a few meta pins or your armor without having to load it up from the freight elevator. And the last kiosk that I want to talk about is the Aesop terminal. E oh, boo! Oh, trying to trying to flog Eve in the middle of how very dare you? That's just God damn it, Eve. <laughs> CCP with the um, guerrilla marketing there. Nice. Um, yeah, makes some sense seeing as we can um, connect to Habs at least, says Open Space. What will be really interesting is whether or not there are hangers that are added later that can connect direct to your Hab, or maybe there are like top end premium. Thinking of like the the um, Islands of Orison, that those some of those might be able to connect directly to a hangar or a garage. Um, and then hopefully at some point these cities get so big that we get to move around them um, a lot more than we are at the minute, right? But that's going to be cool. Um, because all of these issues about not being able to fly into cities 
because of how much extra loading it all takes with all the clipping and all the collision and all the geometry there goes away when you start considering server meshing. PCIG. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I really hope. Um, yeah. Eve Spreadsheet Simulator 1998. Uh, can, I mean, Jesus, can chose violence. Absolutely. Um, Feathers says, is anyone else having a buggy um, overdrive initiative phase two? Um, we did all right on Friday. Um, Feathers, if you have a problem, mate, in the future, let us know. We will go and um, we'll do another community games night. Um, we'll get you along. Same, same. If you see us hanging in Discord, mate, just pop in. If we've got, you know, if people around there are willing to help, I'm sure they will. I will if I've got time um, and I'm, you know, I'm not in the middle of anything else. I would love to help people out. So please, by all means, do that. Mule needs love, says Citizen Scott. Yeah, 100%. I really like the mule and I hope that this stuff doesn't invalidate it. Um, but yeah, uh, there's also vehicle terminals and stuff that they're adding that we can see on here. So. Yeah, it's it's looking good. Um, yeah, let me buy back my more stylish medgun CIG, please, says Shadow Girl. Yeah, 100%. We spent a lot of time on that day saving people's subscribers kit. I saved some for Vigil. We saved some for Shadow because someone pushed them off the elevator. Don't know who that was, but you know who you are. Um, yeah. Which we have positioned in the hangar. So you can request your ships from within the hangar and not just the spaceport. So they will still remain in the spaceport. So if you don't have a personal hangar in your location, you can request your ship also from there. What we're doing is we're changing the way that the ships spawn in the game. You can now request your ships from within the hangar and they will appear to you. But they won't just come out of thin air. What happens is the whole of the floor will open up. You get this like amazing view of the, of the hangar the lights dim, the doors open. And the landing platform will be rising up towards that you looks and your ship will be there. That looks so good. We try to balance it in a way that it doesn't take too much time for you, but also Perfect. that it feels like it has the right weight to it, but also you don't have to wait for it too long. So now you have a seamless transition and a realistic way of storing your ships away. Additionally, you can do clever things like call up a smaller vehicle, such as a ground vehicle, drive it off, and then call up a larger vehicle. Then you'll have access to your ground vehicles without having to go to another location. You'll be able to call up multiple ships and maybe have one person fly off with one ship, call another one, have another person in your party fly up with another ship or you can just call up. So this is really interesting, right? The ability to call multiple ships, obviously up to and including the size of the hangars, which I think indicates, given the fact that like um, cap or the large capital are all getting reworked, I think this is indicating a massive change in the way that they size their pads because the spirit, whether it's just going up a size or whether they're reworking it to account for the ships that are currently in those classes, those pads now don't just have to be able to deal with whatever's on. The metrics of the other pads must fit within the larger ones to allow you to call ships up. Otherwise, how does the game know how many ships you can call at any one time? So there's a lot of work that is going on in behind the scenes here. An incredible amount of work. I'd be interested to know how long this has been in production because, forgive me if I'm wrong, um, and I'm willing to be told otherwise, but I have a feeling that none of this, I can't remember any of this being mentioned at Citizen Con or since. So up until now, right? The persistent hangar aspect. So this is really, really interesting. Um, Richard says, if the ships now come out of the floor, what happens at the space stations or Grim Hex where there's only a thin platform? So these are obviously the home hangars. We don't spawn at the stations as a home location, we don't spawn at Grimhex as a home location, so I'd imagine they will not change operating at all from how they've been at the moment. These are your home locations only. Go put it into a hangar, it'll still be there in theory, although obviously they'll have to be a little bit clever around that because, you know, um, they're going to run out of space. Grimhex doesn't have that many hangars. 
but yes, 100%. Um, it's, it, there are lots of questions that are going to fall out of this that people are just now beginning to, 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 to consider. Um, yeah. I wish the lift was slower. I want to wait longer to see as it's got. Um, stop it. No, you don't. <laughs> um, Shinobi says, I can only imagine the jittery mess that will be in Evo Wave 1 when the ships lift off. Yeah, or so quickly that they just get, you know, catapulted into the roof of the hangar and explode and kill everyone, destroy everything in the hangar, um, just for the lols. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if they program it like that for the time being, just to get their own back on the community for a while. Really looking forward to these hangers, said Feathers. Yeah, absolutely. Not much room, especially if you're trying to load a Carrick with a Seer or an Idris with fighters. Um, well, the, like they say, Av, they're actually going to—they're rejigging all of the sizes. I don't know if they've got that far in the video yet, um, but they are rejigging the sizes, so the larges are going to get bigger to uh, to account for all of this stuff. For the fact that you can have stuff lying around, um, and obviously they've got landing gear all over the place, depending on the ships that you are. The landing gear for the Reclaimer isn't the same place in the same place as the eight ninety, in the same place as the Polaris or the, the Hammerhead or the Perseus or any of those things. So they're adding space to all of it um, for your new LTI um, war bomb safer. You heard it here first. Up a ship, change your mind, and then call up a different ship without having to leave or anything like that. It gives you a lot of flexibility, and I can already tell. In other words, pirates and criminals are screwed and don't get going to. But for the time being, yeah. Well, pirate and store into the inventory or anything like that. Uh, we'll make sure to account for that such that if there's a blocking change that happens, we'll stop the process, go back up to the default state, and then tell the player about the issue so that they can account for it. If you do want to jump in this to the platform player, just know, before really? it closes and fall to your death, you can fall to your death if you want to. Lol. So yeah. So I think that's it. Um, once you can set your starting to pyro, it might be a different thing. Or when we get base building, you can build your hangar at your base. Yeah, 100%. Um, exactly that. Won't be the first time things explode, says Macho. Yeah, absolutely. Zeus at Invictus and Polaris at IAE, says Mr. Thor. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm hoping. I mean, it, what staggered me so far this year, and this should piss off everyone that's come to the stream because of the title, sorry, is just how fast... We've had big promises, as everyone pointed out, that is negative about the project or has reason to be negative, and some people have good reason to be negative, right? But as everyone pointed out, we'd had big promises delivered at CitizenCon before. This is not a shock, right? What's been so surprising so quickly is just how quick over half by number of the features made it into the first patch of 2024. So if you look at how many are promised, I got a video with it all on, so you can go and have a look if you want. I did every feature that they promised last year, not just at CitizenCon, everything that they said was coming in the next 12 months, or by the end of this year. By number, if you just yeah, just notice the title said Scott, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I chose violence this evening. Um, we put everything together and you count it up half of it is in 323 it's how fast they're delivering and even with stuff dropping out as it will do as they've warned as they've said time and time again there's an incredible amount and they're still adding things that we are not um you know yet aware of so we've got this the other thing that they're adding um that it looks like they're adding is a ai animals right i'm just gonna wait go is ai animals um, fauna because we've seen the picture of the woman with the being chased by the flying things we've had the video of the light being thrown in a cave and something growls they're all official they're not mick takes and then if you look at the um the monthly reports for the pu the ai team have been working on an unannounced project for 323 So it might just be stuff that we don't interact with, space cows and whatever else, right? But it looks like that the amount of stuff that's coming, the pace has increased dramatically, as we were all hoping it would do when Squadron 42 went feature complete. It looks like, finally, what they're telling us is coming to fruition, which is exciting, right? Um, are we going to talk about the Raptor sneak peek? Uh, Voss, is that what we were talking about in in terms of the animal, or are you talking about a Raptor for something else? Um 
if not Linky Linky, so we'll have a look at it now. Idris Amin FAA will be to celebrate the official squadron pre-order launch. Yeah, so one of the really interesting things when the whole F8C thing kicked off, um, there was a lot of miscommunication from CIG around the time. There were times saying we're not releasing the F8. Um, there were also lots of things saying that they they were never ruling it out, but it was intended at that point to be part of Squadron. Um, they have also said multiple times of that, which seems to be lost with time, but those videos do still exist, of saying it's not the only ship that will be a reward from Squadron. So, and by reward I mean you've got to do certain things in the game to unlock it, which then enables your right to buy it in-game with in-game money. Um, as a permanent ship, but only those that have had it. So the F8C that came out, I didn't buy it because I want to go and unlock it in the game because I want to go and enjoy Squadron and, and have some meaningful carry across. The good news is if you did buy the F8C, there are still going to be other things you can do that within the game. So you've not really missed out on anything. Uh, Raptors a ship. Um, awesome. Let's Let's have a look. Um, if, if people have got that link. Um, i got to stop you there, Badgers Bro. Every one of these delivered features isn't in-game yet. Uh, and when 3.23 is all in complete partial versions of what they demoed, just saying. Um, yeah, sure. But the argument has not been that they weren't complete. The argument's always been that they haven't delivered any of it. So, you know, if you can show me any other Citizen Con where they've delivered half by number of the features in the first patch immediately following, um, or the first patch of the following year, I'll eat my words. Um, until then, I stand by them. Um, you know, And yes, of course, they're all going to be iterations. Everything in the game is an iteration. Um, Art Corp. Um, all of the landing zones are going to be iterated on. Everything is going to be iterated on. Nothing is in its final form. The, the, the only stage anything in the game can be confirmed in its final form is when the game shuts down because they're just going to keep releasing stuff they've said this forever that they at the moment their only intention is to release the squadron 42 three episodes and this and this will be a live service game until it dies so they're going to keep working so one um yeah no one 100 you know the, the, and yeah I, and i don't disagree with what you're saying of course they will be iterations we will get partial there will be drop off like there has been with the subscriber option kiosk that's supposed to cost the mac so yeah I, I don't disagree with with what you're saying what i'm the, the point that i was making is that i i wasn't contending that these things were ever feature complete um, or the the final forms what i was contending was with the amount of promises that were made at citizen con what we get every year after every citizen con and we got it after the last one was oh, just another raft of features that we're not going to see in game fast forward three months right so um terrifying um yeah so the wheel thing not sort of a ship because that's an engine that's changed location uh oh what have i missed i don't think it's been linked but maybe it's in the um Maybe it's in the uh, general chat or something. I don't know. But, um, oh, is that what it is? Is that it, Edison? Is that the is that the thing you've just linked in general chat? Um, but, yeah. <laughs> There's hangers all over the place um, appearing in my, uh, in our Discord chat and stuff. But, yeah, that, that's cool. Um, if that's what that is, then, um, yeah, we can... Um, Linked too long for YouTube and linked it to personal. Thank you for that. Um, appreciate it. Okay, well, let's have a look. Um, save image. It should pop up in a second. There we go. Uh, no. Uh, save? Question mark? No. I don't know what's going on. There. No! There. Save. Oh god, I broke it. I broke it bad. But there we go. Um, thank god there wasn't anything embarrassing in that, right? <laughs> Just me as a space marine. Um, but I'll dig that photo out for you guys later at some point. Uh, that was that was bad. But yeah, apologies for all the noise. Um, yeah, cool. Okay. 
Um, well, that's not really up, so let's keep on living. <laughs> so this is really cool, and we're really happy to get this in. It's been discussed for some years now, and it's been a very tricky thing to fit in, and certain techs required to be able to do it. You'd be able to have this hangar in your own space and, and call your own ships and do a lot more within the hangar now. Now that we're adding all of this new facility to the hangars in the game, allowing them to be persistent, adding these freight elevators, adding the ship platform, there's a lot of more things that we have to have in these hangars for them to be useful for what we're adding. So the hangar sizes um, had to increase um, quite a bit. We did not want to do that originally in the beginning, but uh, soon when we did prototyping, we figured out that no, not all the hangars, as I'd like the low-tech hangars in particular, are quite old by this point. Not all of them were to the same standards or metrics. So we figured that with the landing pad now going down, you had this gap for like quite some time before the um, before the doors close. So there was a very narrow walkway for the player sometimes. So we had to rejig some things and made it actually larger. So the um, large and XL have had significant size changes. So the XL is about 20% larger and the large is about 30% larger. So certain ships that were a little tight can now fit a lot more easily. So you don't feel like your wings almost scratch the walls of it. So it feels a bit more natural and, and better to the play experience to land in your hangar now. <laughs> but they're not advertising Star Citizen. Um, that's really interesting there, right? When you see the Carrick coming down. And, because and that's, uh, that's a link to the left-hand side here, down in the down in the bottom left-hand corner. That's a link, right? That's experience kind of to land in your hangar now. The medium is the same, but taller. And the small has not been changed. But we re have classified ships to fit into the medium that were once classified as small. So hopefully a much better player experience than there has been before. And it's been interesting to take uh, the design of a elevator and the door uh, and extrapolate that across multiple sizes. So in some cases, you can kind of widen out the door and use the same shapes. And in some cases, you need to think really about how those shapes work. And sometimes they don't work within a small door, for example, when it did work in a much wider door. So we've had to play around with that and keep them looking consistent with each other, but also uh, adapt those shapes to work for each size. So this is an actualization of a long-term goal for this entire cargo career, to make the whole thing feel more real. It means that the whole experience is gonna allow for manual loading. It'll also feel more rewarding because it'll give you more interesting choices to make throughout the process. It'll make multi-crewing a more interesting and useful experience. It's going to just make the whole experience a more skill intensive and interesting and uh, tactile. Another thing that we've talked about is automated loading in the games. This allows you to still do commodity trading without needing to actually move the boxes yourself. It will be an option in the commodity terminal. Whenever you go and you pick the destination inventory, you'll be confronted with several options. One is the location inventory. The next will be all your ships that are at the location. If you choose a ship, you'll have the option to have it be automatically unloaded or loaded for you, of course, with an added cost. The ship has to be stored to allow for the transfer, and it will be time-locked while that transfer is occurring. Different locations in the game will have different amounts of time. Places that are more optimized for trade are gonna allow for faster transfer. You'll be able to still do the trading. You just have to wait a little bit and pay a bit more money. So your profits won't be quite as good in that case. Once the automatic loading process is finished, you can just go to the ASOP terminal. It's a really, really small camera doing strange camera things. It's a really, really small detail, but I really like the cargo transfer button, uh, the symbol. Sorry, just thought I'd throw that in there. In the hangar, access it, raise it, and go off, and you're on your way. 
if you care about cargo, this is going to be transformational. But even... Um, wait. Why would changing the hangar size for a Spirit make it medium jump points? That doesn't make it a medium ship, it just makes it in a medium hangar, right? What am I missing? Even if you're not interested in cargo at all, it's still a foundational change for the game that fundamentally changes principles about inventory, physicality, and your play experience. The work's ongoing. We're nearly there. I think the team's done a great job on this. It's been tricky to get it working as it should be. It's a big milestone for the game that's been years in the making and coming. While I'm here to talk about it today, there's been a large number of teams across the entire company that have helped. Everybody from art, animation. The team's done a great job. It's about inventory, well, physicality, you know, sure. and your play experience. The work's ongoing. Um, that's interesting. Cargo pallets. Is that, am I seeing that right? Is that a bunch of the smaller ones strapped together on a larger pallet? Is that what, am I say what I'm seeing? We're nearly there. I think the team's done a great job on this. It's been tricky to get it working as it should be. It's a big milestone for the game that's been years in the making and coming. While I'm here to talk about it today, there's been a large number of teams across the entire company that have helped. Everybody from art, animation, VFX, through to all of the gameplay teams, engine teams, we've had a huge effort from Austin, Montreal, Los Angeles, Frankfurt, Manchester. It's been a big endeavor. So I want to thank everyone. Yeah, yeah. No, no argument that they're already in bunkers, that they're already in game. My question is that they seem to be adding that ability to us. So you can take multiple small things because they look tied together. That's not just a case of putting things on. They were like strapped down. So you can actually, rather than going, oh, look, I picked up a bunch of this, you can actually kind of turn it into one asset on a pallet, which I think is kind of cool. I, just a small detail I picked up. And that's been helping to see this vision through, and I'm really looking forward to getting this into your hands so that you can play with it. So what do we learn this week? Well, we learned that the days of big ships scraping by the edges of player hangers are almost behind us. Yay. That you'll soon be able to spawn your ships and have them rise up directly into these newly expanded hangers. And that the freight Ooh. elevators and item banks within will herald a new future of physicalized cargo loading that should have long-reaching ramifications for life in the verse. And of course, while everything you see on ISC is always an early work in progress, because of the dramatic and far-reaching effects these systems will have on all life in the verse, you can expect this work will continue to iterate and evolve from what you've just seen between now and its upcoming targeted release in Alpha 323. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. Thanks for letting us share the process of game development. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, for me, that's that's quite a um, that's quite a change. Um, I, I, I don't know if I I don't know if I agree with the idea of spirit being a dead ship. Um, it's got nothing to do with the fact that I have one at the minute. Um, I, I think to assume that this change won't then change how the databases work. Someone's already pointed out that the jump points are not likely to work the way they are. You know, just giving it more room to get in and out of a hangar doesn't tie CIG's hands because it's one value in the database. You know, how do we know it's one value? How do we know that it's not two? That a ship has a value for the size of a hangar and the value for the size of a jump point? Because there aren't jump points, so we don't know that yet. So I don't, I don't think that's the case. Um, you know, I, don't, I think they're gonna, you know, they'll work, they'll work on it. Um, I think the point where it does become a little bit disappointing that it's no longer in a small hangar is maybe that's the key thing is that if it fits into a small hangar it might mean you've got more hangars available um, which means less of a weight or a queue if you've got lots of medium ships that are doing stuff but yeah um, 100% um, yeah overly awesome says single track 66 um, look it's it's um, really impressive that they've got that stuff in um, as they have done at the moment 
Um, I know it's not certain. I'm not trying to say that it's certain, but it is definitely... Um, it's showing, I think, the pace of their ambition. So even if they don't get it in, it's showing what they are, they feel like they're able to achieve with each individual patch, um, which is kind of cool. So yeah, um, I think the Solen will go into the, um, or the Sulen will go into the medium hangar too because they said it made it taller. Um, yeah, possibly. Um, I know it's a pain in the ass to launch as it is. Um, it's a really cool way of taking off, but it's not the easiest thing to do. Um, and you just think that there's no reason to kind of squeeze it into um, a small hangar if you don't have to, right? Um, yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah, they're using diff size metrics for everything for some reason. Yeah, I, I think that they're changing over. It's 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 interesting because I think size metrics was nominally they have to tie into something. I think it is just nominally right. Um, it, you don't want to build system. You want to build systems that are foundation and enable you to do things. What you don't want to do is build systems that tie your hands to a certain, you know, tie your, tie your ability to do things and restrict you unnecessarily from doing things. Um, so yeah, personally I always found the C1 with the weakest offering that you want to enable by them more appeal to me. Yeah, I, I think for me the, the thing I find incredible about the C1 is um, it's got some nice space in it. I quite like that. Um, and also it's the speed of it at Quantum. Um, even stock it's incredibly uh, rapid, which is cool. Um, but yeah, so um, I've done it with the audio again. I, my bad, I keep forgetting to knock it back down after I change over to the music. That's my bad, I do apologize. Uh, hopefully that's that fixed. Um, one of these days, I'll, I'll just do it and it'll be that, but yeah. Yay. Um, I'll figure it out one day, huh? Um, Hey, Zavath, good to see you, buddy. Hey, Badger, just sorry I'm late to the party. One thing with the phase two missions, don't run into the key. It gets lodged in the ship. Wow. Yeah, not good. Um, having a home is legit game-changing. Um, yeah, it's it, it's going to start making locations feel a lot more realistic, which is kind of cool. Um, you know, locations are going to mean something. Now it's not just about, uh, you know, what missions you have access to. It's going to be a range of considerations. It is genuinely, by doing this um, and having home at only locations you can spawn, as you guys have already pointed out, unlawful players are going to move to the pyro system. Because then you can land and do your stuff in your hangar and all that sort of stuff without worrying about being shot to pieces, right? Now, you don't have to worry about uh, going to Korea and the, you know, PvB, PvP fuzzball that's taking place there because it's it's just you know, it's there so that's kind of cool um so yeah, that's that's interesting um, one of the things I did want to pick up uh, I just want to have a look at this quickly is um, they released earlier on in this year, earlier on this week they released a lawmakers community questions so it's the opportunity to ask, um, like, the lawmaker teams, okay, so these changes have come in, how does that fit into the law? And they've got a really interesting one about death of a spaceman and the pyro system that because it's law, and therefore people don't tend to read this stuff, unless you're um, Paul from Astropub, um, people don't really read this stuff. So it's let's have a look. And I'll show you what I mean. So, here you go. Um, death of a spaceman and its impact on the universe. Okay. Is it common in the SE universe for people to swap their physical sex? What I've understood about the way death of a spaceman and regen are supposed to work suggests that this would be pretty trivial to do. Okay, and so on and so forth. The answer is this. Recent changes in medical science in the 30th century have made altering one's complete physical appearance a lot more commonplace. For example, Bioticorp's cutting-edge calliope system allows people to safely and quickly undergo massive structural bone and tissue changes 
that would have previously taken a team of surgeons multiple operations to perform. Regardless of how many changes someone undergoes, there would still be inherent markers that would remain consistent by which deep scans would be able to identify someone in order to maintain a consistent and verifiable ID record. In other words, game space magic say, yes, you can change your appearance. No, that does not enable you to avoid, um, you know, identification by in-game security forces and stuff. Please note this is different from regeneration, the process by which a new body is recreated from an Ibrahim Sphere imprint. These cannot be manipulated and are accurate to your last imprint scan. For example, if someone were to make an imprint, make alterations via the Calliope system, and then experience a fatal accident, their regenerated body would look like they did before they made the alterations, barring, of course, any physical damage imparted by traumatic echoes in the imprint as the result of death. So yeah, interesting. Right. Um, so yeah, um, thank you very much, Delph. I saw your comment earlier, mate. That's appreciate that. So yeah, um, Robert Voss says a bit of hangers. It will give a reason to return to your home hangar instead of making your home on space station. So you'd have to fly that way to do things. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, right? Um, <laughs> geez, badges. I had thirtieth as thirteenth century and went. Wait, what the fuck? Thirteenth. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. Thirteenth century, dark ages. Come on, man. Keep up. <laughs> so yeah um, so yeah basically what this is saying is when you save your character for regeneration via the Ibrahim sphere implant um, your character's appearance at that stage is locked in so if you then go and change your appearance fine but you'll go back to whatever it was when it was saved so yeah makes sense um, some ships won't fit in hangars because they're too big, can't land in that mode and be docking at stations, 100%. Um, my only concern with the F-7A Mark II military is if it will be giftable. I don't believe that it is. Um, I don't believe that it will be. It was, it was in the Q&A, but I think they've said that the upgrade and itself, the upgrade itself will not be giftable. And if you apply the upgrade, it won't be giftable either. So there's no way to, there's no way to game the system. Um, I'm sure I'll be corrected if I'm wrong. Um, another interesting thing here. Did you shink Pyro? Some old information said Pyro is about 13 AU. Um, in the Star Engine, it says 9.83, which is only about two times the size of Stanton. Uh, yes, Pyro system is smaller than it used to be. This decision was made after discussions with other teams to allow shorter travel between distant locations. Nothing has been removed from Pyro. Everything is just a bit closer together. Um, and I would imagine a lot of that is to do with the refuel um, kind of uh, mechanics and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah. I'm pretty sure COG won't want F7As being great marketed. No, exactly that. I, th I think that's safe. So, yeah. Um, and this is um, interesting. Okay. So, it says, Crusader was founded by August Dunlow, a humanitarian visionary who was the victim of state-sponsored terrorism, and the company markets itself as the good guy manufacturer. So why is it the only manufacturer of indiscriminate bombers? Not even Aegis has a gravity bomber, they just build torpedo platforms. It's super weird. You'd think that Dunlow would be a conscientious objector. Even if contracted by the military, they would just build logistics and support ships. But bombers are the tip of the spear when it comes to collateral damage. They're not wrong. Um... Taking a step back, it's worth noting that there is a bit of separation between the ships available to players and those that exist in law. In general, it's safe to assume that there might be other bombers being made, but the law of the game is more focused on the current development schedule is planning for players to actually experience. This is why we haven't made a comprehensive list of all vehicles manufactured currently or historically, as we require more flexibility. As for Crusader, they've always been dedicated towards helping the people, under or under Dunlow, they've made ships for the military since the company's earliest days when the army purchased their vehicle transports. Not long after, the Hercules was conceived as a military vehicle from the struts up. When Kelly Kaplan became CEO in 2863, she began an effort to expand the corporation towards a more military focus, not only in an effort to combat the growing Van Duel, but also to help defend their fledgling military interests, or planetary interests. This led to the development of the Mercury, and eventually the Ares. So rather than the A2 spirit being an abandonment of their core principles, it represents a gradual evolution on how the company sees its place in a changing empire. That sounds like a really, really kind of convoluted way of saying rule of core 
Crusader ships look cool, so why wouldn't we make them for combat? <laughs> um, and I know I'm being a little bit negative there, but it's that line. Taking a step back, it's worth noting that there's a bit of separation between the ships available to players and those that exist in law. Yeah. Yeah, because you're going to make the ones that sell and you won't make the ones that don't. So, yeah. What was supposed to open at Stratus Mall in 2952? Um, consider the, vil the still vacant Stratus. This, so, this is the shopping centre in... Why does it keep doing that? Why does it keep... It's, it's like it's trying to look at my belly. My camera's going, look, he's got a big belly. Fuck you, camera. Um, but, yeah. Basically, in... Cloudview and Orison across the way there's the Strata Center. That's got the rooftop bar, it's where the shop is and the, the all that sort of stuff. There is a place in there that says coming in twenty nine fifty two. This is what it's talking about. Um Consider the still vacant Strata storefront another casualty of the constant nine tails attacks on Orison's platform. Though Crusader never officially announced the tenant meant to move into that space, um in light twenty nine fifty um, places across the Empire were abuzz about the news that Chef Cutty Crawford had signed a deal with Stratus to open a restaurant on Orison. Yeah. Great. So it was a restaurant, apparently. Um, the uptick in Ninetales attacks on Orison's platforms concerned Chef Crawford and he officially backed out of the deal when his ship came under attack on Rick Orison. So, y yeah... In-game restaurants confirmed, question mark? Yeah. Um, and, of course, um, more accents being added to verse than just British and Americans. Finally. Um, because, yeah. So that's an interesting one, right? Um, and then just a little bit of a roadmap roundup. Uh, they've added or they've removed unique item recovery. That's the um, subscriber items being removed from the roadmap for the time being. Uh, quote unquote, we expect this feature to return to the roadmap very soon, and in the meantime, item banks remain on track. Uh, new character customizers um, has been added to committed for 323. Reputation hostility, so updating the reputation system so that players can affect their long term standing with in game organizations via means outside of missions, such as reduction of reputation for killing a member of that faction. AI belonging to certain factions will react differently based on their reputation with you. Lawful organisations will not attack on site as long as they're in a monitored zone, whereas unlawful factions will attack on site no matter what. This is the foundation which allows players to become allies with in-world criminal factions and enable places like Grimhex to enforce their own law, which is really, really cool. Um, Dynamic Crosshair is now committed, and obviously the F7C Mark II has been added because it's in the game. That's in the... Um, yeah. <laughs> just hire a chef at an 890 jump for a date. I mean, ho holy moly. Um, yeah. It's not a cheap date, right? It's not just the meal, it's the ship you need to hire now as well. Don't the military prefer anti-matter torps? Possible. Um, haven't you heard of the Sword of God? It makes you plow into swords. Ah, uh, yes, there's a joke there I'm missing, but yeah. Um, hey, Kuma, fake game, there needs to be a lawsuit. Um, there were. Um, oops. <laughs> uh, Jedi Drifter, um, yeah, good evening, good to see you. Um, yeah, so 100%. Really interesting um, additions and all that sort of stuff. I've just got to go back to the, the question that this raises in my head is when did they start working on Persistent Hangers? Um, has this been something they've been working on since Citizen Con, was it being worked on before? Um, because that's really, really interesting. But regardless, I stand by the idea that this enables them to get it in before server meshing um, and then compare it to server meshing as kind of the test bed for how well the replication layer is working, how well the servers are managing that. Um, you know, do the major landing zones require their own server or, um, or that planet? And, and so on and so forth. Because that was the key thing, right? When we were looking at the big planets and you were flying around Art Court, but you can't land anywhere in it. You were flying around Lawville, but you can't land anywhere in it. All that sort of stuff 
that's not to say there won't still be no no fly zones, but they can add all that because the server will be looking at a smaller area, so it can manage all of the geometry and collisions for those sorts of areas. Because it's not having to manage an entire system, now it's just managing a landing zone or a planet, which is really exciting. Um, maybe those Blade Runner hopes of people in Hawks folding the Hawk up to be able to land in the streets and stuff, maybe that becomes a possibility in the far future. We, we don't know. Scott says, uh, my hopium um, is that they give us a few frontier systems in the 4.0 cycle, not just power on next, but the frontier frontier systems with zero infrastructure. Um, yeah, possibly. Um, I don't know. Um, yeah. Um. <laughs> Shinobi's got a really good point. Imagine the Kotaku into in articles about CIG releasing empty systems, and then uh, CIG are just going to release a hundred, a hundred and or uh, you know ninety eight empty systems plus Pyro and Stanton. But yeah, all right. Cheers. Thanks for that, Kotaku. Um. Yeah. So. Yeah, some really interesting progress being made. A two fingers once again up at the doubters. The fact that they're targeting this for this launch. Um, and actually, what I do really like um, is... The fact that the... And I, I'm trying to think if this, this isn't the case this year so far. There, I think there were a couple right at the beginning of the year. But having said that, since we've had the ISC about what's being released in 3.23 and everyone went nuts and there were all the videos about what's being released, mine included, all that sort of stuff. Um, what is really interesting is that all of them seem to be really good. The content looks to be crazy, right? And uh, all right, there'll be people out there who go, I, I'm not interested in the FPS stuff, so I wasn't interested in the FPS. Or I'm not interested in cargo, so I'm not interested in the cargo one. And I get that, that's fine. But I feel like there are people now who are finding a lot of value in each and every one of the ISCs, which is really, really positive. Um, I think for me, there are, um, you know, one or two questions that need to be asked about persistent hangers, because I'm sure that's what the Q&A will be this week. Uh, one is... I take it the hangers will be instance pulled away, you know, and then put back onto a hanger, um, you know, a hanger door when they're needed, as opposed to anything else, right? Um, and the other part is um, what happens when someone fly, tries to fly into your hangar um, when the door's open and someone just goes, ah, let's fly in and steal everything we can, you know, or grabs, a, grabs an SRV and goes and picks a vehicle off, off the floor and steals one of your vehicles out of the hangar. Is that what they're intending? I, I don't know. Um, but yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Um, but yeah. Um, so hopefully those are a couple of the questions that get asked. Um, I don't know if the question thing's already up. If not, I'll try and put them in and, and get them asked. But um, I don't have a very good experience with Spectrum, um, general, uh, generally speaking. Um... It's things like um, the, the, the live was character creator this week, unless they answered some stuff about it first. I don't know, but um, I started to watch and then unfortunately got caught away with work and I haven't managed to catch up with it since because I've been sleeping. I started watching it again and I, I woke up like an hour and a half later. Oops. <laughs> and that's no, that's not me throwing shade at Star Citizen Live. That's, I'm exhausted this weekend. Um, so yeah, interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, but I'll try and get that stuff onto Spectrum. Um, and then just wait for the fuckery to begin with the community. Um, I think that's the only reason to post it in the Q&A threads. is because people aren't supposed to respond in there. You just get to ask the question. And then people can upvote whatever it is they like. So that's kind of a little bit less... Um, do you think, Zava says, do you think the F7C Mark II Concierge paints will stay permanently in the Pledge Store? I doubt it. Um, the best thing I can suggest right now is buy one, melt it, buy the other, melt it, um, and then just keep it in your buybacks. Because it goes into your buybacks and it doesn't matter. 
that it goes out of the store, they will be in your buybacks forever. Um, so when you bu just make sure you get on that quickly. When you buy it, you obviously have 24 hours to wait before you can melt it again. Um, so you'll buy it, wait 24 hours, melt it, and then it will sit in your buybacks. Um, assume, uh, you know, presumably forever. But yeah, um, interesting. Um, the hangers basically go away from the doors and come to a set of doors when you want them open. Yeah, so you can have 300 people sat in hangers. The only time they're actually attached to a set of doors and you can see into them is when they take off and land. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That That's a better way to deal with it, 100%. Um, and then, obviously, you wait in a queue, I guess, um, for that to kind of finish, um, which is kind of cool. Um, Cargo's not my name, Luke, but I like to see it moving forward and developing, so it doesn't. Yeah, absolutely. Um, reputation might help stop players flying in hangars. Yeah, especially if you can't go back to planets. I think that's going to be the, the the big one, right? Is that the more unlawful you become, the more planets are going to be off limits to you. And that's going to be really sad from like a, a, a you know, oh, they've added a new system. I want to go to these planets. Oh, wait, I can't because I'm a murder homo and they'll kill me on sight. No. Um, you know, I, I'd imagine some of these places, especially around Earth, what they'll do is those security stations that you walk through when you go into and out of a space station, they'll scan you for weapons. So you won't be able to take weapons through. And they'll be like, uh, you'll walk into a thing and it just won't let you through if you've got a weapon on you, even if it's stuffed in a backpack or in a belt or something. Uh, which will be really cool. Because then you can troll people and stop them being mad at hobos. But yeah, um, that'll be quite good to see in-game. Um, I buy and melt five of each concierge plate just in case all and friends miss out. Um, yeah, 100%. Um, can you still buy back and gift from buybacks? I didn't think you could do that anymore. Um, or maybe you can do with paints. I don't know. It's been a long time, ladies and gents, since I bought anything in the back end of um, the game. So, yeah. Um, seen a video of someone getting shot to head by the guards at the security post because they had a crime stat. Yeah, absolutely that. Um, if they're serious about the game, they'll have multiple accounts. Yep, 100%. Um, yeah, you can as long as it's new money. That'll be it. Sorry, you're right. That's exactly what I've been doing is I've been buying back with credits. That's what it was. It's Like I say, it's been so long since I've been in the game and buying stuff. Um, I was tempted to get the war bond um, up to the Mark II, but... <sighs> The problem is, the only ship that I've got at the moment that will go there that isn't part of a CCU chain is the Retaliator, um, which was bought by um, the very first sponsor of the channel, um, the individual who has his own OnlyFans. Not what you think, but I'll let him tell you about that if he wants to tell you about it. Um, he's here. Um, but yeah, it's obviously they're bringing modules with the Retaliator. Um, they're talking about it in the, the progress reports that the bomb module and the fab module and the cargo module are progressing well so yeah um well i i kind of want to keep hold of the retaliator at least until then to play with the modules um and, and have a look at how they work and and you know do a video for you guys which would be really really cool um yeah so some progress i think um module yeah that thing module 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 um, everything else, I have got another, I think it's currently the X1 Velocity at the moment, that is the start of yet another chain that I don't know where it's going or what I want to do with it. That might go that way, but that's a lot of money to get from that to a Mark II. So I won't muck around with that. But I may well pick up the paints. Um, I kind of like both. Um, I, I, I like both of the concierge ones. Um, they look kind of cool. So, yeah, we shall see. Um, um, what's quite good fun is that every so often, so when I do my, my training and such, like, um, you know, I obviously make some nerd references and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and every so often one or two people will out themselves as a bit of a gamer. Um, so yeah, I end up spending kind of uh, a lunchtime or two or a couple of breaks showing them videos on Star Citizen. Um, and, uh, I, I, I've got a you know, kind of get around to handing out my referral code. I haven't done that yet, but I'm thinking I'll make up a couple of, like, Gucci little business cards and all that sort of stuff. That might be quite good fun. 
Um, yeah, we can have a look at that a second. Um, let's have a look. So, does someone in chat want to give us the story behind this? Um, I believe the caption is something like, Clever Girl. Um, which obviously indicates some sort of raptor. So, yeah. <clears throat> it's an interesting one, right? Um, we'll, we'll see. Um, I... I don't know what we're looking at. Part of me thinks here that what we're actually looking at is like one of the utility things on top of or under, obviously in this case, something. So it's like a it's like a turret, um, in the same way that you have that searchlight thing on the uh, cutty red. It looks like something like that to me, but I don't know. What does everyone else thinks? Yeah, they capped the photo with clever girl. New ship, new addition to ships. The colouring, the fact that it's orange makes it look like an Argo thing. The Argo Raptor. I, I'm at a loss. Um, because the mold is red. Oh, it's or orange. Sorry, the raft is orange. The SRV is orange. Like. They could just be doing that to mislead us, right? And knowing that that's the route we're going to go with it. But, I don't know. I really can't see what that is. Argo Raptor forklift. For all your tactical forklifting needs, this can. Very possibly. Um, if you turn it, it looks like a wheel and fender with a headlight. Interesting. Uh, can we flip it? I can't remember. Like that, you mean? I don't want you to save changes. I, get, I don't want you to save changes. Stop it. Interesting. Um, sharing screen, lol. So that's obviously not the angle that it's supposed to be. Um, so there's that. That's what it looks like normally. So that's the Star Citizen the right way up. Yeah, I don't care. So what I'm saying here is it almost looks like, um, if you look, it looks like a turret thing that's sat underneath and the headlight and it's designed to swivel, hence it being circular, right? Um, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, and then someone was saying that if you turn it, control R, let's do that. It does look like a wheel with a light on it. You are entirely right. Um, drone? Possibly. Yeah. Uh, Arcade Alchemist says, what if it's a drone? Um, it's a bike. Wow. Uh, in the photo, I've broken out. It looks like it's an electric motor in the wheel. Interesting. Mirai Heavy Fighter sees it sitcom. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things this could be, right? Um... Edit image. Can we edit it? Uh, adjustment. Brightness. Is it on? Yeah, very low clearance for a wheel. You're not wrong. Um, 
unless that whole thing is suspension, the whole thing's supposed to bounce, but even so. Uh, just a, a close-up of a new illicit drug smoking device. Uh, I've just kind of demonetized my stream saying that, but yeah, oops, never mind. Have it, YouTube, like I care. Um, yeah, look at the one in Discord, I have it brighter, says AB. Okay, give me two seconds. Um, yeah, I don't know why you're looking at a picture of my hanger, but that's that. Let's have a look. Do, do, do. Interesting. Yeah. That looks like it might be something. Right. Give me a second. Save. All right, let's have a quick look. I'll just see if I can open that up. So let's have a look. What do we think of this? I, I'm about to change you over. I know you can't see it yet. Stand by. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I've got to go with what Edison says here, right? Which is this bit here at the bottom, center image. If you look at where the wheel is, the mounting is like that. Which, I mean, even if it's designed to do that, it means you've got to worry about not only the wheels, but what the bit next to the wheels. Yeah, I don't know. Almost looks like the ROC wheel, says Robert Voss. Yeah, possibly. Um, Can says, still don't get the whole naming thing, though. But I never understand why Jared um, names the videos the way he does. Yeah. Looks like it could be the same sort of suspension as the Ranger. Military Ursa. Medical Ursa would be nice, wouldn't it? Right? Yeah, whole bunch of things. Maybe this is... I don't know. Raptor. What's the design of a Raptor it's got? It's long, it's got fast running feet, it's got T-Rex style arms. I mean, if that's even what the reference is, is actually, what the, the reference they're actually making. Uh, maybe it's VTOL. Yeah, that's not a bad shout. So, in other words, you know, to the right is down. Um, so that the blue light coming out of it is actually a downward thruster, although... It's not coming out of the center, so I don't know if that's the case or whether that's just because, yeah. Even the Tonk has some suspension, says AB. Yeah, I'm wondering, that whole mounting might be designed to move. So rather than the wheel going like that on suspension, the whole mounting goes up into like a, a pneumatic um, coil. So maybe that, I don't know. But even so, it's not great. Um, yeah, don't know. I mean, drone gameplay is a bit of a stretch, right? That, that's going to be a bit crazy. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's not in the position, right? Maybe the whole idea is that this is some sort of stowed version and that the wheel actually comes down and becomes a little bit more like the mule one. Don't know. Ah, no clue. Um, I, I really... Um, there you go. Uh, when's this supposed to get revealed? No clue. Um, medical Ursa would make a lovely med bay for my Liberator, um, says Kablams. Yeah, um, medical medical Ursa required, I think, now, or, or medical links or medical something, um, some sort of ground vehicle. Because um, I think, as we're seeing now, there's definitely grounds to be using ground vehicles. Um, as we found out, attacking these bunkers, the turrets can be pretty aggressive when the AI is AI, A, A, and AI is actually working. So A, the turrets pop out and, and attack you, and B, they're actually hitting you. They can do a lot of damage very, very quickly. So being able to drive in in something with a medical bay in it uh, makes a lot of sense now. Um, I think it's something to do with cargo loading as Argo Orange, and Duffo seems to lack suspension. Yet you don't need suspension if all you're doing is driving around hangar. Uh, there was an Ursa in the images from Sitcom. There was, Shady, absolutely. 
Um, so yeah. Yeah. He Wing Commander had a Raptor Heavy Fighter. Interesting. Yeah. Because there's lots of stuff, obviously, from the other games that, that Chris has been involved in that has made its way across to this game. Um, even if it's just a name. But yeah. Really, really interesting. Yeah, I'm 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 stumped. I, I, I don't know <laughs> is the answer. Um but yeah, really interesting spec speculation. It'll be interesting to see what that ends up being, uh, and whether that even ends up being anything in the game. Um, you know, because there's been times when stuff hasn't made it in. But then if they've teased it and if they've used the language, then you know, yeah, I get it. Um but yeah. Interesting stuff. The last thing I wanted to cover today, um, before I th consider wrapping it up, um, possibly slightly early, um, because I, I'm, I'm, I don't know if you guys can tell, hopefully I'm not giving the game away too badly, uh, but I am really struggling at the minute. I'm just uh, exhausted after the last almost two months now of constant delivery and assessments. Um, I just need a little bit of time to catch up with myself. Um, but what is really interesting is over the weekend we have seen... 800 player tests um, which is kind of crazy um, now whether this is 800 on one server whether this is 800 across a shard I believe it's 800 across a shard so it's 400 per um, server or it might be four servers of 200 they did say um, that they were going to be testing things in various configurations it wasn't just going to be the two servers of 200 they were going to do all sorts of configuration tests, uh, but lots and lots of people on. I understand that there are obviously still issues, um, stuff not responding as you would hope if it was a much smaller server, but just the fact that they are getting that many players um, all connected together is kind of really interesting. Um, Robert Voss says, um, I, heard, I thought it said six servers with 800 people. Kablam says... Two servers and six servers from different sources. Edison says 800 people on four. <laughs> um, Edison. Um, wait, I did. this is really unfair. I'm picking on Edison. He's not a native English speaker. So, you know, this is, this is really unfair. But shard ends with a D. You put shards. Which is a fart with a surprise in it. Um, and it's just... I'm laughing, mate, because it's just perfect that you've put that in there. It is absolutely top-notch that you've put... Um, <laughs> um, 800 people on four shots. Um, <laughs> oh, God, I've lost it. Oh, God. Oh, God. That, mate, that, honestly... I needed that laugh. Thank you. That was brilliant. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm not taking the piss out of you, buddy. And, and like I say, I know like your English is infinitely better than my Dutch, right? But, mate, yeah, that was perfect. Thank you very much for that. Got to stress the service to see where the limits are. So, Shady Phase, 100%. Six servers, one shard, 800 people all in Stanton, says Scott. The numbers were given in Evo chat, so can't say what they were. They were very impressive, though. Um... <laughs> Um, yeah, so, yeah, perfect, absolutely perfect, um, crazy, um, but they seem very quickly, hopefully they're getting the data that they want out of this, but they seem very quickly to be trying different configurations, they're obviously got questions that they want answered with the data, so it's really interesting to see, um, those tests going ahead, um, it also basically didn't pass that test, when it was 400, it kind of worked nicely. Yeah, and, and this is the thing. And, you know, um, I heard in another stream earlier on in the week uh, that I was watching that there was a very interesting take by someone. And the, the, the take was that basically they thought that it would have failed if it if it has the same errors of, as 318, right? Um, I have a slightly different take myself, and I think we need to expect 
um, repeats of 318. And I know that's not what I need. Like, I don't want to hear that either, right? But these things are a lot easier to deal with when you're kind of half expecting them. Um, and the reason for this is they clearly don't get everything right first time. Nothing in game development works like that. That's not how game development works. Um, when you consider what they're trying to achieve, there are going to be unforeseen things that break the game, not just the experience for someone. This isn't client-ending bugs. This will be server-ending bugs, and servers will get locked in to something, and you know, then they won't be able to recover what where the characters were because the servers aren't giving that information, um, and the replication layer couldn't get it out of the server, and 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 so on and so forth. Right. So I think we need to be prepared for there to be major upsets. And this is why, and I don't, <laughs> Zava says, that's the version we do not speak of. 100%. Um, this is one of the things that I keep seeing people say in comments on my videos. And I, I, won't, I won't have it out with each and every one of them because there's no point. Um, but know that any time you see a comment on that on one of my videos, my answer goes something like this, right? Imagine you're cooking some tea, you're cooking yourself some dinner, and you're going to peel some potatoes, and you're going to chop some veg, um, and you are going to um, chop up some chicken, and you're going to make yourself whatever it is you're going to make yourself, right? What people are suggesting with this constant, just fix the bugs, just optimize stuff, just all that sort of stuff, what they're suggesting is that you, you chop the potatoes, and then you clean the top down completely, antiseptic. You do all the washing up, you wash the peeler, you wash the chopping board, you clean the oven, you clean the, the, the stove top. And then you chop the first type of veg. And then what you do is you wash the washing the, the chopping board and you clean the tent and you clean the cooker and you clean the stove top and you do all the washing up. And then you do the next set of veg, and then you do the same for the chicken. And the reason I say that is, there is no point polishing and optimizing and fixing things that are, by their very nature, going to get broken again later on down the line, because part of the systems that feed into them have not been implemented or need massive work done on them. This isn't tweaking, this isn't balance, this isn't polish, this is, for example introducing armor to ships that's a fundamental system that isn't going to go smoothly um you know uh, component gameplay engineering not going to go smoothly adding to all the ships so there are loads of ships that they're looking at going you know things like people saying the, the this ship doesn't fly well and that ship doesn't fly well we're literally about to go through master mode so what's the point why wouldn't you, with the Mark II, just cut and paste old flight data from another ship, copy it across, have it behave exactly the same? Why would you do all that testing when you know that a month after you release it, all of that stuff you've tested it is irrelevant and thrown away? And this is why people say, well, we haven't had any systems yet. What's the point in building the ability to switch systems when you know that the system that you want is going to take a crap ton of work. So that system that you're building temporarily is just going to get replaced anyway. And this is why we don't have systems. And this is why I say to people, they need to understand that the game will break again multiple times. But this has to happen for the game to develop onwards. This isn't Call of Duty where they build on an old engine, they just add a couple of updated graphics looks and a couple of extra weapons and they change a the skill tree here and there and maybe they give it some sort of perk some sort of thing that's like the new cell like you know remember they added destructible scenery once and then never bothered again remember that like that right they're not just reselling an old formula they're building this thing from the ground up to be a very different game to anything we're used to and that's that's kind of where we are right um, I'm not sure if they can afford to have the scale of Disaster 318. It really hurt their sales for almost the entire year. Um, I mean, they made more money last year, again, didn't they, than any other year? So I'm going to press F to doubt on that one. Um, 
I have my doubts we'll get match number 323. We might get a bodge, though, I suppose. Possibly not. We will regrow fingers. <laughs> Instead of a carrot being chopped, it's your finger. Welcome to 323. You, you're not wrong. Um, so, yeah. Maybe the last uh, the two new ships we have flight modes for that are already partially adapted to master modes. I don't know. Um, I, it's possible that like their top speed is reflective of what they're going to get. Sorry, their SCM speed is reflective of what they're going to get in master mode, which would be the top of the combat speed. But I, I, I honestly don't know. We don't know until we get them. Um, exactly. And that's why they launched these big play tests so early, preventing the same scale mistakes on 318. Yeah, and, and this is why I think we're seeing the tech preview channel, which is the, the PTU version... 0.5 right it's the other side of it 100% they need to head this stuff off at the pass that's not to say that they aren't going to see game breaking shit though uh, but yeah you're entirely right that's exactly what's that that is there to do um, that they've discovered that there are certain things that work when they're testing it even if they're trying to flood test it with their devs it's entirely different when you give it to us and we flood test it because there are literally millions of us um they were well behind on sales all last year, and um, and then they laid it on thick. Yeah, one hundred percent. But you know, they recovered. So, you know, um, the F seven Mark II um, is because it's almost the same as the F seven A of Squadron Forty Two. Um, yeah. So yeah, um, interesting um, progress. Yeah, I, I guess that's just a cautionary thing. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to piss on anyone's bonfire, right? Um, but it is just a cautionary thing if there are going to be these problems. And it's it's a bit tiring now to see people constantly say things like, eh, but but they need to polish and they need to balance and they need to bug fix. It's like, no, because all of these things are getting core work. And someone said Quanta much earlier on, and that's where I wanted to go with this bit, was that until they understand how the servers are going to communicate to each other, there's literally no point in touching quantum, which is why it's gone really quiet. Because they don't know. They don't know how it's going to work. They've got the idea. They've gone as far as they can with kind of back-end simulations and stuff. But now they're like, well, how do we get the data out? How does that feed into it? Because the quantum simulation kind of sits on the back-end. So that's happening on an another set of servers, which are feeding off the replication layer and all the information that that's. And then they're pushing that through the replication layer into the servers. So the game servers aren't paying the expense of simulating where the NPCs are, what should be in the ships. They're simply going to the to the quanta servers. Um, I need to spawn a cargo ship here. Uh, give me some options. And then it'll go, yeah, sure, spawn one of these with this cargo going from here to here. And these are the sorts of NPCs that are in it. Thank you. So that's weight removed from the game servers onto a back-end simulation, which you know, run queries, which is different to running the entire simulation. You know, it's it's one thing entirely to say what what's in this area to keeping track of the entire game. So, yeah, until they understand now how that information is going to go into Quanta, they can muck around with the simulation and stuff, but there's not a lot of stuff that they can do there and show us because, you know, it's either going to be just maybe this, maybe that, maybe we can do this, let's, let's examine some possibilities. Because if they mention a possibility that doesn't make it into the game, you know what, we'll be like, eh, they promised and now they're not giving it. No, we didn't, we mentioned it as a possibility. Eh, CIG, bad communication, me. So yeah. Sorry, I don't know who that was. You're right, Badgers, the difficulty in adding so many more systems at once is that it makes code bug hunting that much more confusing and, and conflated. Um, 100% me. Uh, exactly that. Um, polish etc. isn't needed. Um, not just an absolutely ungodly broken mess that was a, yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, that patch was an absolute train smash. And I hope we never see its like again. I just, I understand why we might, because it's not, they, they, they could learn every possible lesson from 318. And it could still happen again, because the lessons are entirely new, because now they're working on an entirely new system. It's got nothing to do with 318, and it breaks. So, yeah. Um... Consolidated out when Raptor fighter dropship or gunship. John Franklin, hello, buddy. We were having a look at the images a little while ago. Um, my answer is I've got no effing clue, mate. No clue whatsoever. Some of the things we talked about was maybe it was a drone, maybe it was a ground vehicle. Uh, it looked like it might have even been a turret. The key takeaways for us was 
ground vehicle is looking unlikely because there's not a lot of, if you look at where the wheel is if that's a suspension rod that it's attached to there's only about that much difference in the two um the color orange seems to indicate argo therefore some sort of industrial um or support gameplay um yeah um and the way it looks like in the original image seems to be some sort of like bottom turret potentially if it's not a wheel we just don't know we just don't know um but yeah um kablam says there's probably going to be a server handling just the personalized hangers until the core to be answered to exit from yeah 100 percent um arcade alchemist says server meshing acts like the neutron of the bond between player interaction simulation calculation wow um and the stream of assets and data um yeah it's very layers now it's amazing because now it's modular um yeah so um the stream of assets and data um obviously that's um a mix between the replication layer and the servers the servers feed into the replication layer the replication layer basically acts like a socket so the replication layer knows where everything's supposed to be at any given time if the server falls off which is just simulating the space another one spun up into its space and takes that information from the replication layer um servers are splitting up the workload in effect um Quanta is the, the system that absolutely blows me away. Um, this idea that you can, in effect, have something like the Nemesis system from Mordor Shadows of War, or whatever it's called, um, where you can encounter an NPC, and it's just a random NPC. It's given a name, it's given personality traits, it's a criminal, but it kills a player, so now it's got a crime stat, so now it's a permanent NPC, and that it tracks what it does, so it goes off and it it makes some more money and it attacks another player and kills them and takes some money from that, makes a shit ton of money and now it's employing other pirates and the next time you encounter that NPC, it's now a crime lord of a criminal organisation. Crazy that they're putting that stuff in. And I know people will say it will will say, and I get it, like, oh my god, you know, that's taking a basic system and taking it to its nth degree. Yeah, like every other system that Star Citizen, that CIG have ever built. I've said it for a while now, and I'll say it again. This isn't just a game. They're building a universe simulation, and they will continue to build um, towards that process. Um, you know, they, they're going to continue to build things that enable them to... Um, copy that sort of stuff um yeah nemesis is absolutely painted in, but you know when you look at the way that this works across multiple games and oh sorry multiple servers and all that i think there's enough difference they'll get away with it um but keeping track of npcs and all that sort of stuff and and simulating them on a different system is very different to simulating them in a single player game so i think they might get away with that and i also don't think the people behind shadows of mordor with mordor shadows of war are going to care because the games are so different i don't think they're going to claim that you're robbing game players from shadows of war to play stuff um but yeah hopefully yeah, just elon is testing the implant on tony z next better not he better keep his hands off monster um but yeah uh, there's probably going to be a, a separate server handling the personalized hangers um yeah, very potentially. And that, and that's the beautiful thing, right? Is this is where server meshing becomes very, very clever. Is that you look at a city and you go, wait, this is full of like 700 player apartments. It's like, yeah, on another server. But then they look out and see people whizzing around. Because now from one server, you can see into another server. And that's what makes that system utterly, utterly incredible. Um, just just crazy right um I, I i don't think it's possible to overstate the importance of both server meshing and quanta but maybe we'll do a video on quanta a little bit later down the line right and we'll do a recap and we'll do it not from the level of the kind of undergraduate lecturers degree um course that tony z did at thingy um at citizen con all those years ago We'll, we'll look at it from a more kind of gameplay perspective, the possibilities. So there will be a little bit of theory crafting. I'm sure I'll go off the deep end with a couple of examples and things that absolutely aren't confirmed. But I think when you look at this sort of stuff, it's always worth looking at the potential as well as the absolute state that it's in now, right? 
because the one thing that's guaranteed is the state that it's in now is going to change. Um, so let's look at what they're aiming towards. Um, zoning is what's most interesting in how they're going to allocate object containers. Some of that seem uh, some of that seems totally unrelated. Yeah, it, it, it's crazy. And how later on they'll be able to split the game up into sections so that the servers themselves can recognise. Wait, lots of work in this area. So here's what we're going to. Um, here's what we're going to take off the server to, to split the load. So rather than maybe splitting the game up into areas, maybe servers actually dynamically split up and go, I'm going to take the missile calculations, or I'm going to take the this, or whatever else. Also, Javelins, their own system, their own server, Bengal, its own server, seems really possible, right? So yeah. Rampant speculation, who are you and what have you done with badges? <laughs> He's in Edison's basement. Um... <laughs> But yeah, absolutely. Like they might find it most efficient to use one server for outer space, as well as instance hangers, player homes. Yeah, it, it's it's crazy. It, once you start, once you break your head out of the conventional server thinking, and you start considering the fact that players can interact on servers, that servers are literally just platforms that are put next to each other, and you can jump, you can walk from one platform to to the next. You can throw things, you can fire things, you can drive things, you can fly things. That um, it, it begins to, the mind begins to boggle as to what you can actually achieve with server mission. Because the next thing is, you know, it doesn't need to be an area that it takes its functions. So it goes, hey, everything that we're going to do with missiles, all these calculations are coming to you. Everything we're going to do with drones, that's going to come to you. And so on and so forth. Um, it's kind of a crazy system. Um, ladies and gents, I, once again, it has been an absolute pleasure talking with you all this evening. Uh, link to the Discord is in down below. Um, if you are coming to CitizenCon and you're at all interested in a DGP style meetup, finding out where I am, what I'm doing, and, and everyone that's getting together, there are loads of people in here that are going to be meeting up. If you want to come and meet any of us, make sure you're on the Discord. There will be shortly a channel going up once we've got tickets and stuff to say what's going on seems a bit pointless to do that before tickets but i may well put something up about where we're staying there's a couple of hotels that aren't charging um unless you attend so there's no harm in booking hotels at this range because it's not going to cost you money unless you forget to cancel by the day of the races so we'll put that stuff up and you guys hopefully will, will see that it's been a pleasure seeing you all um again i will not be here next sunday I'll be having Easter with my family. I'll try and put something up on the community wall just to let you know I'm thinking about you all. Um, but we will, um, you know, uh, restart on the 7th of April. Um, and I look forward to seeing you all then. You've been watching Drinkers with Gaming Problems. Thank you very much for stopping by. I'll see you soon.